Southwest Florida at the beach. This is the Gulf of Mexico behind me. I'm in my one of my favorite places in the whole world. This is Wiggins Pass State Park in Naples, Florida. If you are joining me live, please say hello. Let me know if you're crafting this morning. Let me know if you have questions for me. Uh, we're live. Anything goes, right? <laughs> Anyway, happy hump day. It's Wednesday. Happy Wednesday, aka happy hump day. And I um, have something very special to share with you today. You may want some tissue. I don't know why I didn't bring tissue because I'll probably be quite emotional uh, sharing this with all of you. Oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. Anyway, whatever. Um, for those of you wondering, I'm wearing the Audra Poncho this morning. This is one of my favorite beach cover-ups ever. Uh, I love to wear it as often as possible. Now, because I'm not going in the water, I'm not actually wearing a bathing suit under it. I'm wearing a black bodysuit and black bike shorts with a cell phone pocket in them, uh, which gives the illusion of kind of a bathing suit silhouette underneath but I definitely feel more put together and I would feel totally comfortable going in the store or doing whatever. And I know I'm not going in the water. Good morning, Grace. Sorry if I missed any names so far. Hi, Judy and Lisa, Jill, Carrie, Donna, Lily, Lisa. Gosh, I'm reading some names without my um, glasses on so far. What do you know? Hi, Maria and Joe and Anna. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Hi, Jackie and Deborah and Christine. Good morning. Happy hump day, everybody. Hi, Kathy. Good morning. So glad you all could be here. Does anybody notice my bangs? I am ridiculously excited to report that not only did trimming the back of my hair myself work, but my DIY curtain bangs work too. And I think what's so incredibly exciting about this to me, hi Anna, hi Anna, good morning. Um, not only did I trim my, trim my hair because needed a trim, wanted to try it, but I found a, hair, a hairstyle cut that I thought was sexy and cool and I wanted it and I tried it and it worked. So it's one thing when you trim your hair for utilitarian purposes, your ends are raw or your ends are frayed, you need a trim, whatever. But I chose a style based on the style and cut it myself and it worked. Like this is one of the most empowering haircut moments in the world to me. I mean, they turned out, right? Doesn't that look like a soft angled curtain bang, right? And they're probably a little shorter than traditional curtain bangs, but my hair is also a little shorter than a lot of the TikTokers and YouTubers that are doing it. They're so young and beautiful and have tons of full hair. Uh, but I am very excited that it turned out. It didn't look like it turned out when I cut it, but today's the first day that I styled it with a blow dryer and I'm very proud of myself and very excited. Uh, so next time I trim it, I'll do a DIY video now. I was afraid to videotape the first time because there's no reason to share your journey with people if it didn't work out. But now I know it worked out, so I will share it next time. Um, can show you the back of my hair. This is the first time I've blow dried my hair since cutting the back. So you tell me, did it turn out straight? I didn't do much with it. I just blow dried it straight, but you tell me, does it look straight across the back? Does it look like I have nice layers? And I forgot to even look this morning. <laughs> uh, there's a bunch of them, Jackie. Uh, I literally just pulled all my hair up into a ponytail and cut straight at the top one time. And for the bangs, I made a triangle section here, pulled it in half and twisted it and cut along the angle of my jawline. There's a ton of them you can find uh, I didn't watch any one in particular. I watched a handful of them because I wanted to take an average and see uh, what were the majority of people doing because there's a ton of styles out there. Yeah, the back looks good. Back looks good, okay. Yay me. Thank you so much for sharing your opinions. I appreciate it. So what else are they gonna tell you? Well, tomorrow's the giveaway, so whether you have or have not commented on the podcast from last Thursday, episode 843, I will be, thank you, Vera, um, I will be uh, choosing a random winner from the comments tomorrow, hopefully during the podcast. I may have to do the podcast at home in order to have Wi-Fi 
uh, I'm, I brought my iPad with me this morning to share something very special with you, but at the same time, I wanted to see if the hotspot from my phone would allow me to continue live streaming here from my phone and give me Wi-Fi coverage on my iPad. And so far, so good. I don't want to, let me, let me just test real quick. see so we're still live streaming here and I'm testing oh my gosh it looks like I do have connection here it's kind of risky ah. I feel like if I mess up it'll make a lot of people disappointed if I don't do it live uh, but I would like to do it from the beach as well so hmm it looks like it's working though so there was there any uh any difference in uh, stream quality once I went online here on my iPad? I'll wait a second and see what you guys say. Hi, Jane. Good morning. No, no difference. <gasps> so we can pick the live winter, the live winner <laughs> while still being at the beach. That's exciting. Okay, then that's what we'll do tomorrow. And then after that, we will, I will go back and reply to everybody on that video. As of yesterday, I think there were 275 entries. If you haven't entered to win, I will be giving away 10 balls of Viso Baby yarn. Oh, which is the yarn I used to make the Audra Poncho. Uh, yeah, so I'll be giving that away to one lucky winner. No, uh, no exclusions, anybody all over the world can enter. And thank you, Proverbs. And so uh, if you haven't left a comment, please do so. Only one comment per person, please. Okay, well, since I have my iPad open today, I thought you might, if you, I don't know if you follow my blog regularly or if you know when I've written a new blog post. I know I'm not like a famous blogger or anything, but I do blog. <laughs> there is a blog on my website. I don't know if any of you uh, are aware of that. And you can get to it from the top of my website. There's a little button right on the top uh, header up here that says blog, and you can find lots of wonderful stories and information about different products and all kinds of fun stuff there. Um, I think it's interesting. <laughs> anyway, I've been writing uh, one blog post for about a week now. Uh, I had a conversation with Marlon one day. He was helping me in my office. He helps me from time to time. And we, I was, we were talking about a book. I forget how it all really started, but I mentioned to him that, you know, out of all these books, do you know that I've actually written a dedication in every single one of them and it was to you every single time? And now after 20 books and what are we talking, uh, from 2000, 2008 was my first book, so uh, th over 20 books over 13 years, a lot's changed in that time. And I thought how fun would it be to write a blog post sharing all of those with you and then finding a photo from that year that the book was published and sharing that along with um, a copy of the, you know, a photo of the book cover. So I wrote a blog post talking about all that and there's a few paragraphs explaining all of it. But then if you scroll further down, I have a photo of Marlon and a photo of the copy of each book along with the dedication from each book written next to it. And I thought you might like it if I read those to you this morning. Now, can I get through this without getting uh, teary eyed? I don't know. <laughs> but Sanshell, the Instagram post only sh talked about the beginning of it. It didn't share the dedications. You actually have to go to the blog post to read all of the detailed dedications. The um, the, the Instagram post and the Facebook post were just to let you know it was there, but you really do have to get to the blog post to read all of the dedications. So I thought it might be fun to read them to you here this morning too. Does that sound good? Would anybody like me to read them? I mean, I'll read them out loud this morning. Try to stay uh, not, not too emotional. And then you can always go back and read them as well. So I just, it's so special, it's so special. Okay, so Wrapped in Crochet was my first book, came out in 2008, and the dedication says, to Marlon, my inspiration, and John for being an angel when we needed one. So John was a friend of mine who took us in when we came back to the US from Israel. We had nowhere to stay, no money. My ex-husband had put me into $50,000 in debt through identification, what do you call that? Identity fraud. So I came back with no money, no credit, no car, no anything, 
and my friend John took us in at the request of my divorce lawyer who said I needed a safe place to go that my ex-husband didn't know about because of all the death threats. So John has passed away three years ago um, and it was so special. One of his last Facebook posts, because we stayed friends over the years and he was a father figure to Marlon when um, Marlon needed a father figure from time to time, right? And so John was always a family friend to us. And one of his last Facebook posts before he died of cancer um, was saying thank you to Kristen for being an angel when he needed one because I had helped him a lot in his final days, weeks, months. And it was so weird <laughs> to me that he remembered that one dedication um, from 2008. It must have really meant something to him that I thanked him in a book. And you know what, possibly? Most people don't write books, right? Most people don't get a dedication in a book. So um, I bet that was something really special to him and I, I wouldn't have known. So that was very cool. So when I was writing this the other day, I not only remembered how much he helped us in when we first came back in 2004, but I also remembered that he remembered it in one of his final Facebook posts. Whew, touching and full circle, right? All right. <laughs> I cried on the first one. <laughs> anyway, so Crochet So Fine 2010. Oh, and then there's a photo of Marlon and my mom and my grandma and me at Wrapped in Crochet from our first book signing. And in that photo, you'll see my grandma holding a crochet purse that I made my mom wearing a crochet shawl that I made, and me wearing a crochet top that I made. And all three of those patterns were never published. How funny is that? Or they're not published now. Okay, so then Crochet So Fine 2010, you see a cover of the book and you see a photo of Marlon and me with my niece and nephew, uh, Wyatt and Annika, and we were dressed for Halloween. Ani and I went as fairies. Marlon went as uh, a gangster, like a 1920s gangster, and Wyatt went as Perseus, and <laughs> this is a whole DIY Halloween also. So Ani and I, I painted very elaborate fairy makeup on Ani and me, and Marlon and Wyatt both got um, the beard treatment. They're both very young boys here, so I used ma black makeup to give them the appearance of beards. And I also DIY'd a fake cigar for Marlon out of a paper grocery bag. I do believe there's a blog post with a DIY tutorial on how I did it. It was so cool and it looks so real. I even burnt the end so that it would look like it had been smoked. It was so cool. So here's the dedication from Crochet So Fine in 2010. To Marlon, my inspiration, I love you with all my heart and soul. I love you with all my heart and soul is something I've said to him for a very long time. All right, Seamless Crochet 2011 has a copy of the book Seamless Crochet's cover and also a photo from Marlon's birthday that year where we went parasailing and uh, the guys on the boat took a photo of when they dip, like as you're riding, they, they do a surprise thing where they dip you down in the water while you're still riding. And it's a little scary and exciting. And they captured our faces as our toes touched the water. So this has always been a special photo to me because you get that element of excitement and surprise on our faces. And it's such a great shot. And that's from 2011. So here's the dedication to Marlin in Seamless Crochet, which was published also in 2011. To Marlin, my shark hunter and French photographer extraordinaire, you inspire me always. I love you infinitely. So <laughs> shark hunter was a name that I called Marlin to protect his identity when I first became, you know, uh, a public personality and uh, had to share my life online and social media and I thought it was a good idea to not share Marlon's name and and, so, and also this was a time he was super into the crocodile hunter and we called him the shark hunter because we needed to put his name on his tackle box and also a, a time when you don't want to put a child's name on their belongings out in public so shark hunter became his name online as well now he was also doing a lot of the photography for my business at that time because I had a professional camera, you know, a DSLR, and uh, I did not have 
a, a phone that had a capable camera and a timer and a tripod to do my photography myself. So he was my photographer. And when he did, he would pretend like he was a fancy French photographer and use a French accent and go, oh, ho, ho, you know, stuff like that. It was hilarious. He would like take on this persona. So that's why, and it's funny, I'd forgotten about that until I read this dedication. So, you know, tears started rolling again because when you remember things that are special that you forgot, like how does your brain forget something like that? Anyway, I'm grateful that I had this wonderful reminder. All right, next is A Knitting Rhapsody, also published in 2011. And there's a picture of the cover of Wrapped in uh, Knitting Rhapsody and a picture of Marlon and me. We went on an overnight trip, I believe it was for his birthday, to go fishing on the East Coast in the ocean on a uh, not a private charter boat but like a semi-private where you went out with a bunch of other people too and in this photo we're eating breakfast in the hotel the next morning and he has a piece of cantaloupe in his in his cheek and you can see it in his smile and i don't know we're both glowing from getting you know sun the day before we both have these big smiles on our faces we had seen some gigantic fish out there on the boat he caught a trophy sized barracuda that day uh it was a special special birthday and so uh definitely one of my favorite photos of him the dedication in a knitting rhapsody from 2011 to marlin my shark hunter i love you sweetheart i still call him sweetheart he doesn't care for it so much but i still do Okay, next we have Compliments Collection from 2012. This one I designed, uh, this one I wrote for uh, Bijou Basin Ranch, which was a wonderful yarn company out in Colorado. They're no longer in business, but they were owned by two very special people to me. And we, I designed this book exclusively in their yarns at that point. The book is no longer available, unfortunately. Um, but that photo next to it is from my birthday that year. So we've always had this tradition where Marlon picks a fancy restaurant, makes a reservation, and we both dress up and we go out to dinner on my birthday. That's been my tradition for my birthday to teach him how to celebrate other people for many, many years. And um, this is my birthday dinner with him in a tie and a dress shirt. And I think I'm wearing, no, I'm not quite, he gave me a beautiful necklace for my birthday that year and I'm not, I hadn't opened it yet. It's, I, I wore it once I opened it at the restaurant. Isn't that a nice picture? We had a lot of fun that night. So the dedication in Compliments Collection in 2012 to Shark Hunter, your heart of gold and outrageous comedy continue to inspire and entertain me daily. I love you to infinity. The next one is The Finer Edge, 2013. And there's a picture of Marlon and me at the beach at sunset. He's wearing a shirt called, what does it say? Just bring it. I believe this had to do with the, the Rock Dwayne Johnson. We were both into MMA, not MMA at the time, WWE, and he really loved professional rest, wrestling at the time. And I think that was a shirt that I bought him that was made, um, yes, he gave me the heart that I'm wearing many years ago for Mother's Day. Uh, okay, the dedication from the Finer Edge in 2013 is I dedicate this book to my shark hunter. You are my inspiration to be the best person I can be, to work hard and smart, and to always have fun and smile. I love you with all my heart and soul. 2013. Also in 2013 was Knitting Outside the Swatch. And there's a photo of Marlon and me. This is the first time I was allowed to bring him to a gym. I don't know if it was legal to be honest with you, but it was a gym that wasn't checking ages at the door. So this is his first time getting into a gym and you can see how proud he is. And we were both very excited. We've both been gym, I've been a gym person my whole life. He's been a gym person. Oh, he's definitely uh, very much so. His, we've both been into working out as far back as I can remember. And looks like I missed the dedication for knitting outside the swatch. So I have to go back and update this blog, part of the blog post when I get back to my office. Whoopsie. Next was Beginner's Guide to Knitting in the Round in 2014. I wrote this one for Leisure Arts. And there's a photo of Marlon probably winning his first tennis tournament. Look at how little he is there still. Look how skinny I was too, yikes. That's probably 60 pounds less than I weigh now. Oh well, I'm gonna have to let it go. 
All right, my dedication in Beginner's Guide to Knitting in the Round is to Marlon, my shark hunter. As, as you become a young man instead of my baby boy, you continue to inspire me and challenge me to be the best person I can be. I only hope I make you proud too. I love you with all my heart and soul. Next up are two books that I wrote simultaneously. This is the first, I've written two books simultaneously twice in my career, and this was the first time. This is, I taught myself to crochet 18 inch doll clothes, and I taught myself to knit, to crochet 18 inch doll clothes. So these were for uh, American doll, American girl dolls, but you weren't allowed to say that in the titles of the books. And they came as kits with uh, needles and tools. And they, I published these with Boy Yarn Crafts. And uh, I was not allowed to add a dedication to either one of those, but I can show you the photos. There's Marlon and me at one of his tennis tournaments. Also still skinny at that point. And there we are. I believe we were at a blues festival in Bonita Springs there, which was awesome. I love blues and it was a really fun time. Okay, the next book was Zen Art, a coloring book. That was the coloring book that I wrote in 2015. And you can see with all of my artwork in it as line drawings. And this is another one of our birthday dinners. This was my birthday in that year, 2015. I believe we went to I think we went to a place called Chops that year. Um, but there we are on my birthday dinner. And he was on social media at that time. He was on Instagram at that point. And he posted a photo of me and said, happy birthday, mama. And he took a picture of me that night. And that was the first time he'd ever acknowledged my existence on social media. And I thought that was amazing. <laughs> that was 2015. Here's the dedication in that book. To Marlon, my sweet and funny, newly teenage son, you challenge me, inspire me, and entertain me every step of the way. I love you with all my heart and soul. Next up is Crochet So Lovely in 2015. And there's a picture of us, of us in front of our DIY Christmas tree. I hand knit and crocheted all of the ornaments on our tree that year. And that's the year we got Bjorn and Becker as well. I have another picture from that day where we did a family photo of Marlon and me with Bjorn and Becker. I didn't find that one quickly though. This is the one I found for the blog post. Here's the dedication. A special thank you to my shark hunter, my sweet, talented, and good-natured son. The seeds of my wonderful career began while you were still growing in my belly. Now, some 12 years later, I watch with ever-increasing pride as you blossom in the man you will become. You continue to inspire me beyond words. I feel truly blessed and love you so much. The next was crochet, uh, continuous crochet in 2016. And here in this picture, I believe we were at the beach and you can see I'm wearing a Project Kristen Cares hat. So I'm guessing this is the year that I started my charity, Project Kristen Cares. I could go back and look, but I'm pretty sure I wore that hat very proudly when I first uh, created the charity. Here is the dedication to continuous crochet from 2016 to my sweet, smart, funny, caring, and silly teenager, Marlon. Wow, my first time calling you a teenager in a book. Now, I know I said it in two books prior, but that was a book I self-published, so I wrote that one and published it right away. These books were published with Interweave Press, and so there was a year between when I wrote the dedication and when the book actually came out. Uh, to think that I picked up a crochet hook for the first time while I was pregnant with you. I'm so proud of how hard you are working toward your dreams. Your lofty goals remind me of when I was your age, and they help me to remember I still have big dreams too. The world is our oyster. With big dreams, big passion, and hard work, we can do and be anything we strive to be. I love you with all my heart and soul. Then the next book was Motif Magic, Volume 1 in 2018, and this was the first book that I independently published. This is when I went from traditional publishing to publishing myself with Amazon. And that is a picture from my birthday. <laughs> As he got older, we just didn't take that many pictures together anymore. And so I've always tried to get pictures on birthdays uh, so that at least we had some pictures together. The dedication in Motif Magic is, this book is dedicated to Marlon. You are the reason I picked up a ball of yarn 16 years ago and since then blazed a trail to make a beautiful life for us. I am so proud of the hardworking, strong-willed and determined man you are becoming. And next is 80 Handmade Gifts, 2018. Another special moment where I have uh, Marlon and me hugging in a photo. 
This book is dedicated to Marlon. No matter what life has in store for us, we will always have each other. We share a dedication to hard work and staying focused on our goals. You inspire me every day to laugh and have more fun along the way. I'm so proud of you. I love you with all my heart and soul. Next is Layers Crochet and Layers Knit. And these are the next two books that I was mentioning earlier that I wrote simultaneously. I wrote them both at the same time, which was the second time in my career that I did that. So these dedications are identical. This book is dedicated to Marlon. You have grown up so much this year and I continue to be amazed by your strength, energy, and ability to find the humor in everything. I am so grateful to be your mom. I love you with all my heart and soul. This photo is still the screensaver on my phone. We were getting ready to go see a movie. I believe it was the, the movie that was a prequel to uh, The Shining. Dream, sleep, something. And then this one, we're at the Miami Open watching famous tennis players play. It was so awesome. So fun to see him there. Then next was 88 Crochet in, uh, Stitch Encyclopedia. And there's a picture from us from New Year's Eve, standing in front of the full-size gingerbread house at the Ritz-Carlton in Naples, which was just magnificent. That's a full-size gingerbread house, real. And there wasn't a dedication in that book. Then 52 crochet gifts. Marlon dyed his hair black for a short period of time. This book is dedicated to Marlon. This is my 18th book, and I have dedicated each one to you. We've come a long way together. As you enter adult adulthood this year, you will be making more choices and taking on more responsibility than ever before. Just always remember, your mama is your number one fan and will always have your back. I'm so grateful to be your mom. You continue to inspire me in ways you'll never know. I love you with all my heart and soul. Next is Be So Caring, Volume 1 from 2020. And that's Marlon with my mom and me. One of our birthdays, it might have been my mom's birthday. Marlon's definitely taller there. I dedicate this book to my son, Marlon. If it wasn't for you, I might never have written my first book. You are the most important person in my life and the inspiration behind all that I do. I love you with all my heart and soul. I hope I have taught you by example that you can't control what happens around you, but you can choose to never give up and never stop giving to others. I can't wait to see how you are going to impact the world with your infectious humor and kindness. Then the last book, or the book, the last book to date. This is my 20th title, 24 Crochet Hats. And there's a photo of Marlon with my mom and me at her birthday this year. Or maybe it must have, yeah, her birthday this year. And I dedicate this book to my son Marlon. My world is a better place because of you. You continue to inspire me to be a better person than I was yesterday. I love you with all my heart and soul. <laughs> well, here's to the next 20. <laughs> Uh, thank you for indulging me and letting me share that with you today. I thought it might be fun to share a little more behind the scenes of even the blog post so that I could tell you, you know, the significance of each photo or the significance of why I wrote what I wrote in the dedications. I thought it was a little more, I thought it was fun to share a little more detail behind the scenes with you. So if you enjoyed it, great. If you didn't, I understand and you don't have to watch if you don't like it. But uh, I really, I think, I thought this was such a special experience and such a wonderful gift for me to give Marlon. Like I was so proud to send him the, the link to my blog post. Um, I thought that was just so great last night to be able to share with him so he could see that chronologically. We have about a minute and a half left before the Blake Crochet Sampler next video is starting. So if you would like to join me for part five of the uh, Blake Crochet Sampler video series, it'll be Motif E. Uh, it's going to be a live premiere, so I will be live in the chat room there. If we have time for, and you can ask me questions or whatever, if we have time, let's see, we've got about a minute. Let's see if I can grab a quote. I took my bookmark out, whoopsie. All right, I know we did that one. This is by Benjamin Disraeli. The greatest good you can do for another is not just to share your riches, but to reveal to him his own. Yes, inspiring others to want to do great for themselves. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink, right? So I love this one. The greatest good you can do for another is not just to share your riches, but to reveal to him his own. 
Thank you, Benjamin Disraeli. And thank you to all of you for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me. I hope you enjoyed the sunrise, the beach, uh, my walk down memory lane. I only cried once. Yay me. <laughs> if you want to watch the, read the rest of that blog post, it's all listed on my website. On the blog, you can check it out yourself. And I've posted and I've shared links to each of the titles if there's a book you want to check out uh, and see if it's something that might interest you as well. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you at the live premiere right now, and then I'll see you tomorrow for the podcast and announce the giveaway winner. Bye.